Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your daily analysis for the S&P 500 for the trading session dated Thursday 4th of October. I'm recording this video a little bit earlier because I have to get away early this morning. I'm recording this video now. Just gone 3 in the afternoon New York time. Price is moving really slowly. It's probably finishing a fourth wave correction. I really don't expect much more explosive movement in the last hour and a half of today's session. Here's our first daily wave count. I'm just going to go through the daily wave counts briefly to try and make the video a little shorter for you. This one expects new all-time highs. The midterm target for our first three daily charts is pretty much the same. This one is at 1508, where this fifth wave will reach a quality in length with this first wave. Price is now just back in this parallel channel. I'd expect it to move a little bit further into this channel. We still don't have confirmation though that the fourth wave is indeed over, but it looks most likely that it really would be over here, because otherwise it would start to be out of proportion to these other corrections that we've experienced on the way up. So it's most likely that it's over, but if it moves further sideways and lower, it can't move into wave 1 green price territory. This wave count is invalidated with movement below 1426.68. This first chart expects that this third wave is extending, but if the third wave within it, 3 pink, is not extending, and if it was closer to equality with 1 pink, then 3 blue itself could be over, and it does subdivide here for the S&P as a nice 5 wave impulse. But this doesn't work for the Dow. The reason why I want to seriously consider it really for the S&P is the implication of this invalidation point. This is possible for the S&P, and if the fourth wave correction were to continue as a double combination and move lower, then it can't move into wave 1 blue price territory below 1380.39. So if this daily chart were to be invalidated, we would have a really strong indication that we had a big trend change up here. This is our second daily chart, which is looking at a different possibility at cycle degree that we're in a flat, and within the flat we're ending the B wave upwards as a triple zigzag. Triple zigzags are really rare structures, and in this case the B wave is longer than the maximum expected length in relation to A. It's now longer than 138% the length of primary A. So that reduces the probability of the second wave count down to more even with the first. Either way, we're still expecting this impulse needs to be completed. The target is the same. We're in a fifth wave up to 1508. Then we'll have a fourth wave correction, more upwards movement to 1513. We see blue would reach 1.618, the length of A blue. And because this needs even more upwards movement, when it's all done, primary B really will be quite long in relation to primary A. Really does reduce the probability of this wave count. That's why I think it's about even with the first. Here's the end of that fourth wave here. I still have the same two hourly charts. We have two possible structures unfolding for this first wave at orange degree within the five wave structure of five green. This first hourly count looks at the possibility that it's an impulse which is most likely so it's my first hourly count. With the 1, 2 and within 3, 1, 2 and within that 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 may or may not be over and 5 is probably probably underway. At 1470, 3 aqua would reach 1.618 the length of 1 aqua. MACD does show an increase in, in momentum to the upside for this third wave so far so it's all fitting reasonably well. Within 3 aqua, 1 and 3 red are pretty close to equality, so I would not be expecting to see a Fibonacci ratio between wave 5 red and either 3 or 1, so I will leave this target the same calculated at 1 degree higher at aqua degree. 4 red subdivides nicely on the 5 minute chart into a really nice zigzag. This upwards movement so far towards the end of the session is really choppy and overlapping though. We may be seeing a leading diagonal begin or, a bit less likely I think, 
for red could be continuing further as a flat or possibly a triangle. If it does, it can't move into wave 1 red price territory, movement below 1454.3 early or late this session, which I don't think is going to happen, or possibly early on Monday wouldn't validate this wave count and confirm our hourly alternate. When 3 aqua is complete, we'll expect another fourth wave correction for 4 aqua and the invalidation point at that stage can move up to the high of wave 1 aqua and that may mean that we're going to see this lower edge of the channel again provide support for downwards movement. The midterm target's exactly the same. Alternatively, it's all the same to this point here where we have the end of a fourth wave correction, whether it be at green or blue degree, and the other structural possibility for a first wave, for wave 1 orange, is a leading diagonal, where subwaves 2 and 4 must be zigzags, and subwaves 1, 3 and 5 are more likely zigzags or possibly could be impulses. So we have a zigzag for 1 and 2. 3 certainly could be a complete zigzag here. If we get a new high above this point, then it's extending higher as an impulse. If price does not move above this point, 3 purple certainly could be a zigzag, slightly longer than a quality with 1, so the diagonal should be expanding, which means that 4 should be at least as long as 2, which is achieved at 1445, and the most common length for fourth waves and second within diagonals is between 0.66 and 0.81, the length of the predecessor wave. So four purple will be 0.81, the length of three purple, at 1443.6. So if we don't get a new high above this point towards the end of the session, and this wave count remains valid, expect price to move lower, if it moves below this point, invalidating the first hourly wave count, expect price to continue lower to between 1445 and 1443.6. When that's done, another zigzag most likely or possibly an impulse to the upside for the fifth wave will end a leading diagonal. For a diagonal, the fourth wave should overlap the first wave price territory but it can't move beyond the end of the second wave, this wave count is invalidated with movement below 1439.01. The midterm target is exactly the same. Finally, this is our alternate for the second daily wave count. It's looking very unlikely. This just doesn't make sense if we've had a trend change. I can't see this as either a leading diagonal or an impulse. It just doesn't subdivide properly so far. So I don't really want to say much more about that. So if price makes a new high towards the end of this session, above 1463.14, then we have an impulse subdividing to the upside. That actually fits both of our hourly wave counts, because a third wave of a leading diagonal can be an impulse, and so not often, but it's reasonably common. If price doesn't move above that point though, and it turns around and moves below 1454.3, then we have a short-term target to the downside, and we'll have clarity as to what structure's unfolding in that first wave position. Either way, overall, we should be expecting more upwards movement yet, and when that's done, we'll be expecting a second wave correction mid-next week. That's all for me today with your SMP analysis and I hope that members are all looking forward to a fabulous weekend.